on, come on, and open up your mouths and begin to lift up your voices unto your God tonight. Come on and open up your mouths and begin to glorify and magnify the name of your God tonight. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty, the Lord God mighty in battle, the Lord God of hosts. Open up your mouth and worship the name of your God. These young people could be in the streets, homeless and ran through with diseases, starving and hungry, but they are in the house of the Lord. So you might as well praise God. If you're not going to do it for yourself, do it for these young people tonight. If you're not going to do it for yourself, do it for this next generation. Open up your mouth. And lift up the name of the Lord. For God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I wish I had a witness. I said God is good all the time and all the time God is good do you need proof turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I'm the proof I'm the proof I'm the proof first giving honor to God who is the head of my life to my pastor in his absence Bishop Shelvis R. Green senior and to his wife, Lady Nicole Green, to the angel of this house. Come on, y'all, to the angel of this house in his absence, and to his wife. That's my family, y'all. To Deacon Crawford, thank you so much for your hospitality. Tonight you will find me in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Commencing at verse 1, ending at verse 10. One more time, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Commencing at verse 1. When you have the word, say, I'm ready to eat. All right, then, then let's feast. The word of the Lord declares, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up your flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in your body, and ye shall live. And ye shall come together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God. Come them, come, sorry, uh, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Can you look to your neighbor tonight and say, neighbor, speak to your dry place. We oftentimes hear this text spoken in matters of revival in which something in our life, whether it be passion, whether it be health, or whether it be uh, finances, has been restored back to its full and comprehensive capacity. We look at this text and envision something specific to our lives being resurrected. 
We envision something that we have previously or recently desired, but have given up hope on and imagine that God is going to miraculously place it in our laps. We are sane enough to believe that God will give us a miracle, but then become crazy when we hear that stipulations are involved. We are sane enough to believe that God will give us a, a business and make us entrepreneurs, but we can't even handle the task given to us on our jobs. Uh, this text shows us that God can do the impossible. It proves to us that we are not crazy for believing in an impossible God. But at the same time, it's telling us that for a brief moment, we have to sit still, listen, and obey. The problem that I've seen that the church is facing is that we are operating under undiagnosed ADHD. What do I mean by this? Well, we dance, we shout, we holler, we run, and we leap over the word of God, forgetting that there are stipulations. And so now we will wait several months, probably even years and decades for a promise, not realizing that this promise was made in covenant. Ah, we were too busy running around and dancing when we should have been sitting still listening to the word of the Lord. Otherwise, we would have realized that in order for you to get to the glory, you have to go through some hell. Some of y'all don't believe me tonight, so I'll let Paul tell it to you best. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. It is your hell that makes room for your miracle. It is your sufferings that teaches you how to handle the little things with grace so that you can handle the big things, oh my God, with accountability. Oh, good God Almighty. It is that thing that teaches you how to handle that little thing with caution so you can handle the big things with grace. It's that hell that teaches you not to take your life for granted, but to render your body holy and acceptable, a living sacrifice unto God. Beloved of God, the text tells us that revival is not just a conference that we have quarterly or annually. But in all truth, revival is a process of God rebuilding what once was dead for his glory. Not because we simply asked for it. Not because we deserved it. But for his glory. Uh, the word revival means the state of being revived, uh, such as A, being renewed attention to or interest in something, or B, a new presentation or publication of something old. When revival occurs, God does not just revive your passion, nor does he revive your finances, but he, the true revival starts at the foundation of your relationship with God. When revival occurs in our life, before God restores finances, before God restores health, he goes to the heart of the matter and he restores our desire and our hunger for him. And from there on out, everything in our life begins to shift. He begins to do an inner work. So the next time we are presented to the world, they will look and marvel at the glorious works of God. Revival truly isn't just for the church but revival uh, is something for the world to look at and so they can see that there is still a miracle working God we were called to be the chief rulers and princes of the earth and so when revival occurs it's for somebody to look in the from the world to look in and to look how God has taken us from the dust of the ground and highly exalted us to be the rulers and the principalities of the earth revival oh my goodness is not just for the church but revival is for the world somebody say it's for the world it's for the world it's for the world 
What we are looking at here in the book of Ezekiel is God answering the prayers of the saints. We pray revival amongst the church and its auxiliaries, and we pray for revival amongst the world and their evil and malice mindsets. Well, and what we are witnessing now in the book of Ezekiel is God is giving us the guidelines and the instructions to revival. I got three simple points, and then we're out of here. The revival being described in Ezekiel 37 is called the eschatological resuscitation of Israel. That means that God was not just reviving a dead army, but he was reviving the set of statues, laws, and doctrines of the children of Israel. The laws of Moses, the statues of Joshua, the wisdoms of Solomon, because simply Israel had lost their way. How could God be shown to the rest of the world as just and righteous when his own chosen people had turned away from him? So revival had to start at his relationship with his children and he had to remind them of who they were in covenant with. So as I bring you my first point, I want you to write this down. Point one to revival is acknowledging who God is and why we are in covenant with him. Uh, in the eschatological resuscitation of Israel, they had turned their backs on God and embarrassed him. But you know what he did? He embarrassed them back. The Bible lets us know that right before this scripture occurs, that he sent them into exile so they could remember that he is still God. But decreed their return so the world could remember that they're still my children. And I am still all powerful. Everything that he did was not just to break them, but to grow them. He broke them not to destroy them, but he broke them so revival could take place. And they would get back up better than how they came down. He prepared for them revival. And they had to remember who had the power to shape and mold their destiny. The word of God declares, for if my people who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal the land before revival hits your household before revival hits your life or before revival hits your church or your family you must understand that this is not a one-sided relationship he does not give and you only receive but he requires something from you. Uh, people of God, you must understand that he requires your obedience. He requires your uh, uh, all of you. And he requires your determination. And if you want revival, he wants you. Uh, you want to experience true revival in your life, you must get back in relation with God. Get back into your secret place and commune and talk to him daily and restore that connection that is dead. The same thing God did with Israel, he is getting ready to do in this place. There is an eschatological resuscitation going on right now in this room and God is getting ready to reignite the flame and the hunger for him in your life. Some of you are about to wake up in the midnight hour and fill the burden to prayer. Some of you are going to feel the fire of God push you into aspects of your life that you did not even think you were qualified for. And it's all because you remembered who he is. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you still remember who he is? All right, point two, and we're about to get out of here. What we find in this text is Ezekiel is ushered into the wilderness by the spirit of God. He is ushered into a dead place by the spirit of God. He is ushered into a dry place by the spirit of God. Ezekiel is not frightened, neither is he in distress because he has become familiar with the person he is in covenant with. So as I begin to enter point two, I want you to know that getting familiar with the voice of God and learning to trust him is a vital necessity for your revival. Good God Almighty, Ezekiel has allowed God to 
usher him into a place that should consume him, that should disturb him, that should uh, overtake him. But because he understands that he serves the Lord God Almighty, he is not afraid. The Bible declares that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I, I don't know about you, but if I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I would be afraid. I don't know about you, but if I was sitting at a table where all my enemies were present, I, I would be a little bit paranoid. But because I am familiar with my God, I know that he would never allow anything to overtake me. I heard the psalmist say, for when the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they had stumbled and they had fell. I am not afraid because I love the Lord and he loves me. I ask your neighbor, do you love him for real? Do you know him for real? Are you familiar with him when we have become familiar with God and his voice when we have become familiar with his word and his will you might find that it becomes a whole lot easier to obey him you can trust him even when doubt creeps in I'm not saying that living for God will be a breeze nor will it be preaches peaches and creams living for God comes with a lot of warfare but he makes it a whole lot easier and I'd rather struggle in God than to perish in the world. For his word declares, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Uh, then it says, my sheep know my voice and unto another they will not follow. You must understand that you must be familiar with God so that you can ascend to glory. You are not meant to be burdened like you are, like exhausted like you are. But if you come to know him, if you receive him, he said, come unto me all ye who are heavy burdened and heavy laden and I will give rest to your soul. He said, be not weary in well doing for in due season if you faint not you shall reap what you have sowed if you become familiar with God and his laws and his statues the only outcome is victory you have to be like Ezekiel and learn to trust him even in the midst of a dry place. You got to be like David and learn to trust him in the dead place. You got to be like Jeremiah and learn to trust him in persecution. You got to be like Job and trust him even when it doesn't make sense. Because trusting God will set you up for revival that will have others looking and asking what manner of man is this that can open the blinded eyes that can heal the broken hearted regulate the dumb minded raise the dead and tear down strongholds you'll be able to say it is my God uh, in whom I live and in whom I shall die it was Ezekiel's trust in God that shifted him into the next phase of his revival and it shall be your faith that will shift you into the next phase of revival. I come to preach to those who know God for real. And I've come to encourage you tonight and to let you know, don't you stop trusting in God. Don't you stop believing in God. Be ye steadfast. I'm Movable, always abiding in the love of the Lord. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Oh, good God Almighty. And you keep holding on until something begins to happen. You keep holding on until he breathes on your situation. And 
brings it back to life. I did not come to preach to those who were confined by their circumstance, who are confined by possibility, but I've come to preach to those who are looking for an impossible God to do an impossible thing and bring back revival to your lives. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready because God is getting ready to do the impossible things. The third and final point to revival is now using this covenant authority to speak over your dry place. You have to remember who you are in covenant with. You have learned to trust him and now you have learned the covenant you are in with him. Now you must use your covenant authority to tell these dry bones to live. Tonight's text says that God began to ask Ezekiel several questions. We know that God cannot ask questions that he does not have the answer to because said question does not exist. He asks Ezekiel a question that he already knows the answer to. Not to irritate Ezekiel, but to show us the readers that if we could trust him, he could trust us. God uses Ezekiel to establish his logos and his ethos in this text. The fact that God asks Ezekiel a question that he already knows the answer to shows us that God is not only omniscient, but he's also omnipotent. Not only that he wishes to share his omnipotence with us, but he wishes that we be witnesses to his good works. Some of y'all don't believe me, but I heard in the book of Genesis, the triune God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. We are just like him. Triune just like him. Mind, body, and soul. We are powerful and creative just like he is. In the mathematics, we are engineers. We are scientific. We are technological just as he is. And as we had to be reminded that we are in covenant with him, he is reminding us through his logos that we are powerful with him. Otherwise, his word would not have said, greater is he that is within me me than he that's in the world. I got a few more minutes left. I got to close now. What I like about this text is that God gave Ezekiel the authority to speak over this dry place and to prophesy to the bones. But it was the spirit of God that met him there and once everything was said and done, it was the Spirit of God that brought it back to life. People of God, the Lord has given us the authority to speak over our dry places. Some of you do not believe that God will ever bring you into a barren place. That God will ever bring you into to a dry place. But I heard him say in Genesis to Adam and Eve that it is your job to take dominion over the earth, but not only take dominion over the earth, but to subdue it. In other words, wrangle everything that is in the earth under your submission. Some of you are in a dry season, not because this is your judgment, not because this is what you deserve, but God wants you to use your covenant authority and to turn nothing into something. A lot of y'all don't believe me, so I'm going to ask Joseph to come here. Reuben threw him into the pit. Judah took him out of the pit. 
and he was sold into slavery but he was exalted from a slave and he came second to none under Potiphar y'all not hearing me it was the slave that sat on the throne of Egypt because he understood who he was in covenant with good God almighty so what we find here is that Ezekiel uses this authority in the midst of a dry place he should have gone hungry he should have died in the midst of the dry bones he should have given up all hope but as soon as he heard the voice of the Lord he was encouraged how do I know this because God Acts Ezekiel, son of man. What we must realize here is God is putting Ezekiel in his place. Ezekiel, son of man, you are not God like I am. But I've come to ask you a question. Can these dry bones live? They've been dead for centuries. They've been dead for decades. They've given up all hope. And they've given up all possibilities of life. But can these dry bones, can they live? And Ezekiel is not dumbfounded. Because he understands that he serves Jehovah Jehovah. Jaira, the maker and ruler of heaven and earth. So his response to the question is, I don't know. It's not I can't tell you. But he says, Lord, I know you to do all things, but fail. So if these dry bones can live, it's completely unto you. So when God looked at Ezekiel and he said, Ezekiel, you're absolutely right. Now speak over this dry place and tell these bones to come back together. Speak over this dry place and tell this flesh to be sewn back together. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who comes against you. I'm getting ready to do something in your midst. Ezekiel, I've come to talk to you tonight and to let you know that these dry bones, they can live. You came here expecting revival. You came here expecting increase. Well, I've come to prophesy to your barren place, to your dry place, to your dead place, and let you know that revival is here. How do I know that? Because the Bible declares, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall enter in. He was given covenant authority. He has placed it in your hands. Now he wants you to know, can he trust you to speak over your dry place? Or will you decide to stay there? Will you run away like Jonah? Or will you be like Isaiah and say, Lord, here am I. I will go. I'll bring revival to the street corners. I'll bring revival to my family. I'll bring revival to my household. I'm no longer living in these dry bones. But I'm getting ready to experience the harvest. I'm getting ready to experience the move. I'm getting ready to experience the shift. And I'm waiting on God to meet me here. Shall these dry bones live? Well, Ezekiel, if you speak a word, you'll find out. Shall my finances be restored? 
well Ezekiel if you speak a word you will find out shall my family be healed well Ezekiel speak a word and you'll find out then we are all is done when the word has been spoken when the flesh has been wrapped together I will meet you where you're at and I will breathe upon that thing and it shall live live again and live more abundantly live more prosperously for if you decree a thing it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy word and you shall live more abundantly more prosperously speak to your dry place speak to those dry bones speak to that dead thing because revival is here and the Lord has met us where we're at some of you are waiting on God to move but you gotta speak that thing that be not as though it was for now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen you're waiting on revival but revival is here speak that thing over your family what Jerry said I'm to Jesus you don't need him gotta visit me in my house but speak a word and my daughter shall be healed and the Bible declares that by the time Jesus got to Jairus' house that his daughter was pronounced dead but Jesus said get up out of that dry place get up out of that dead place get up out of that barren place all you got to do is speak that word speak to those dry bones speak to that death thing speak to that health issue speak to that circumstance speak over that financial problem speak over your children because I declare it and I decree it that the enemy will not have this generation but I speak to that dead place I speak to that dry place our children will be set on fire for the word of God again our children shall be ignited for his will there's nothing that can stop the impossible God for he can do all things but I got two minutes left child so open up your mouth and speak to that dry place speak to that dead place if you decree a thing it shall be established it shall be established you will not die in this but you ought to Speak to that thing. You ought to prophesy to those dry bones. Prophesy and say, Live, live again. Live, live again. My children shall live again. My finances shall live again. My health will be restored. I speak to that dry place I speak to that dead place devil you thought you had me bound 
devil, you thought this was the end, but I know my Savior. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. And for you and me, he died. But that's not how the story ends. Because three days later, he got up with resurrecting power. He got up with revival power. You're here for revival? Well, here it is. You're here for revival? Well, here it is. May the Son of God grant you revival. May the Son of God resurrect every death thing in your life. Speak to that place. Speak to that place. And watch God do it. Watch God move. Watch God do it. Speak to 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 your dry place. Speak to your dry place. Speak to your dry place. Ezekiel. Speak to it. Ezekiel. Speak to it. Speak to it. Now open up your mouth and give God. I said give God praise. Because it's already done. Give God praise. Because your children are already saved. Give God praise. Because your finances are already restored. Give God praise. Because you're no longer homeless. Give God praise. Because you're no longer addicted. Give God praise. Because you're no longer haunted by the traumas of your past. Praise you the living God. Praise you the living God. For revival. I said revival is in this place. Revival is in this place. Speak to that thing. Speak to that thing. Speak to that thing. The Spirit of God has filled this place with revival. And you better receive it. Don't you go home the same. Don't go home back to those drugs. Don't go back home to that man. Don't go back home to that woman. But receive your deliverance. Receive your revival. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Don't you leave this place without your revival. Don't you leave this place without your victory. For the woman with the issue of blood said, I don't even need to hear a word. You don't got to lay hands on me. But if I can just touch the hem of his garments. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who took the revival? Out of my belly who took the revival out of my soul and she said Jesus I was in need and I knew that you could do a thing so I did a thing and I received my revival so don't you leave this room without a touch Don't you leave without your revival. Don't you leave without your healing. Speak that thing. Speak that thing. Speak that thing. And so it shall be. For the promises of God are yea and amen. Yea and amen. 
I was given a time limit. I'm trying to, I'm trying to obey. But before I got here, good God Almighty, the Lord said nobody's leaving this place without their revival. I told you that revival was a process, and He said by the end of this week, by the end of this revival. He said that by the end of this week, everyone who followed the instructions, everyone who renewed their covenant with me, everyone that trusted me, everyone that obeyed me, I'm coming to you, don't worry. The Lord said, that thing that's been burdening you I don't know what it is but he's saying the word family 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 and he said that family member that's been burdening you and that's been causing you to go into isolation and that's been causing you to hide yourself he said he says I'm not only gonna get ready to do it for you but he says I'm getting ready to do it for your whole family I'm not just turning it around for you, but even them too. They lied on you. They cut you off. They said you was never going to be. He said, watch me prove them wrong. Ezekiel, speak to that drop plate. You, you've been trying to run and hide. The Lord says, but I caught you. He says, and if you surrender to me, he says, I'm going to make you more prosperous than you ever thought you would be. He says, the enemy has you bound to this certain area that you've been trying to get out of. But the Lord says, He said, in the next 52 days, watch me turn it around. Watch me turn it around. Watch me turn it around. Speak to that drop place. Speak to that drop place. Speak to it. 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 Hey! He said that before the week is out. He said that before the week is out, he says, I'm getting ready to do something for 17 people in this place tonight. Some of you are dealing with heartbreak. Not all of it is financial. Some of you are so deeply heartbroken. Some of you need to be shifted out of that dark place. He says, for some of you, I'm restoring your debt. And then he says, forever, I'm mending broken homes. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to sit on your dry plate. And he said, in three months, watch it be made whole again. Watch it be made whole again. I'm getting ready to relinquish this mic. But before I go, I want you to hook up with a neighbor. Hook up with somebody. We getting out of here but the Bible says in the text that Ezekiel he had to call upon the four winds he had to call upon the Spirit of God and invite God into his dead place 
And the Bible says as soon as the winds entered into the dry bones, that they lived again. And God said to Ezekiel, he said, these bones represent Israel. And he says, I'm getting ready to bring them out. And I'm getting ready to make them great amongst the earth again. So what are we going to do before I leave? We're going to pray and we're going to invite the King of Glory in to sit upon our dry place and to cause it to live again. Ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite you into our dry place. That place that's been burdening us. That place that's been causing us, oh God, to be stagnated in your wheel. We speak to that dry place and we say, lift up your heads. Oh ye gates, uh, and make room for the King of Glory. Uh, make room, make room, uh, make room, make room. We declare it in the creed right now. Uh, we declare it in the creed right now uh, that this thing shall be dead no longer. Uh, this thing shall be dead no longer. Uh, this thing shall burden me no longer. Uh, but we decree a thing uh, so that it can be established. Uh, we decree it over our bloodlines. Uh, those generational sicknesses uh, have to be loosed off today. Uh, those generational curses uh, have to be loosed off today. Uh, we decree a thing uh, and we speak uh, to that dry place. Uh, we speak uh, to that dead place. Uh, for we shall be planted, uh, oh my God. Uh, as a tree uh, by the living waters uh, oh god right now uh, oh god right now uh, we don't want to be like the fig trees uh, who do not produce any fruit uh, but lord see our labor uh, lord hear our cries uh, lord meet us uh, at our dead place uh, and resurrect uh, resurrect the dead uh, resurrect our dead passions uh, resurrect our visions uh, our our dreams, our hopes, our families. When we leave this place, we'll be ignited. When we leave this place, we'll be on fire. On fire for you again. On fire for you again. On fire for you again. For the Lord says, I've called you, I've called you, I've called you, and the reason you're burning is because you're not just anybody, but you a curse breaker, 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 that Jezebel that's been haunting your family, that Jezebel that's been trying to break up the family, we speak against it, hope. We speak to it now. We speak to it now. Hey, we speak to it now. That dry place. Uh, igniter, oh God. Uh, igniter, oh God. Uh, Cause she gonna bring the word of God uh, to her family, uh, her cousins, uh, her friends. Uh, ignite her. Uh, Cause she is called to the deliverance ministry. Uh, she not gonna die in this. Uh, she gonna live to tell her testimony. Uh, and others shall hear it. Uh, and be delivered. Ignite her. Oh, yeah, da, 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 Come here, young man. Come here, young man. Come here, yeah. Yeah. Oh, ba 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 ba. Yeah, da 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 ba. Da 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 ba. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Yes, God. I anoint your hands because the Lord says everything you getting ready to touch. Hey, ba 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 su re be be ba. Is getting ready to prosper. He says, I've anointed you for the arts and everything that your hands touch. Everything that your hands touch shall be prosperous. And you're going to be the one hey, ba, 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 su, uh, that brings generational assets to the family. You're going to be the one uh, that brings millions into the family. He says, the devil's been trying to attack you. 
the devil's been trying to attack you. But that thing that's been placed in you, hey, I ignite it now. Ho, ya da 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 ba. Ho, ya tama sokobia. I ignite it now. Ho, the devil won't have you. The devil won't have you. The devil, ho, ya tama suria ba 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 ba. Hey, come da 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 su. But I speak to that dry place. Live again. Ho, ya tama so. Live again. Hey, ya tama da 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 da. Live again. Ho, ya da 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 se. Ho. Live again, live again. The word of the Lord is live again, live again. The enemy thought he could kill you with that scandal. The enemy thought he would take you out. Live again, live again, live again, live again. You want to live again? You gotta prove your enemies wrong. You can't give up here. You got to prove your enemies. Live again, live again, live again. Live again.